In this clip, I'm going to provide a tool to generalize the idea of a determinant to general n times n matrices. Well, for square matrices, 2 by 2 matrices A, equaling A, B, C, D, we define the determinant as the product of A and D, so the diagonal elements, minus B, C. And this number reflected actually exactly when A is invertible. So A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. So the question is, can we generalize this idea to general n times n matrices A? It would be nice to have such criterion according to which we could decide whether or not a matrix is invertible. So, consider an example of 3 by 3 matrix, A is U, V, W. Then, of course, we have, we have two cases. So, one is A is not invertible. And the second is that A is invertible. So in the first case, when A is not invertible, then we know that the space spanned by the column space of A is not the full R3, which means that actually the dimension of these vectors is not 3. So U, V and W, they are in some plane V. Yeah, so consider a plane V and we have the vectors here inside the plane. But then we know that we may construct an auto, a vector orthogonal to both V and W, which is the cross product of V and W. And since V times W is orthogonal to the plane, we, it is also orthogonal to the vector u. So we have that the inner product, the dot product of u and, and v times, and the outer product with v is zero. Well, the second case, we have that a is invertible, so uh, we know that the cross product of v with w is not orthogonal to the vector u. So if we consider a plane where v and w are in, then the vector u is pointing outwards. Uh, and we have that v times w, the cross product of these two, is not orthogonal to u. So we don't have a zero in a product of u and the cross product of v and w. So the suits are an extension of the definition of a determinant since we again have a formula for a given matrix where non-invertible matrices get value zero and invertible matrices get value non-zero. So we define the determinant of a matrix A as the inner product of its first column with the cross product of the second and the third column, V and W. So now we consider the following example. With three columns, A is written as as columns in U, the, U, V, and W, then according to the definition of a determinant of this matrix, we calculate the inner product of U with the cross product of V and W, the second and the third column. So this is no more than the inner product of 1, 2, 3 with the cross product of 4, 5, 6 with minus 2, minus 1, 0. Yeah, 
Uh, so we first will calculate the cross product in the following fashion. Yeah, we make these blue crosses, so we get again the vector one, two, three, and the inner product with the cross product, which is six minus twelve and six. So we see that we get six minus twenty four plus eighteen is zero. So this matrix is not invertible. Well, we may check this also in a different way by noting that W is actually two times the first uh, column minus the second one. Yeah, so uh, W is a linear combination of the first two columns. Another example. We only slightly changed the third column. So now the determinant of the matrix A is the inner product of 1, 2, 3 with the cross product of 4, 5, 6 and 1, 0, 0. So now we get the vector 1, 2, 3 and the cross product, the outer product is 0, 6, minus 5 so we get as a result, 12 minus 15 equaling minus 3, which is non-zero. So this matrix A is invertible. So this gives us a way of calculating whether or not a matrix A is invertible without performing uh, Gauss-Jordan elimination steps to arrive at uh, reduced row echelon form.